Not every first-time author achieves overnight success at a very young age. To the contrary, some writers publish their first work relatively late in life, sometimes very late indeed. Russ Mitchell has the story now of an author's tour like no other, by an author whose life story is like no other. It was amazing, you know, and to actually see a 102-year-old man. At the unlikely age of 102, George Dawson has arrived in New York City from Dallas, where he lives. I understand you really wanted to come to New York, is that right? Yeah. Why? I, I, I want an offer and hood tell of it, and I wanted to see it. Yeah, he wrote the book. Yes. George Dawson, he wrote that book. The book the is his home. memoir, Life is So Good. <laughs> a book that could not have happened until George Dawson first learned how to read. When you told people at the age of 98, that you wanted to learn how to read. Did they take you seriously? Did they think you were kidding with them? They said I was too old. They said you were too old. What did you say to them? I said, you never too old to learn. When I first met Mr. Dawson, and when I found out how old he was, I said, oh, my goodness. Yes. And then when he told me he wanted to come to school and had never been to school before, I said, oh, my goodness, 15 times. Carl Henry has been Dawson's teacher since he first showed up for class at this South Dallas school. Do you remember what we talked about when you first came? About ABCs. Yeah, we were going to teach him his ABCs. And uh, it took him two days to learn them. It took me two days to learn my ABC back up to the power. <laughs> Be pretty. Right, okay. For most of George Dawson's life, taking time out to learn how to read was a luxury he simply couldn't afford. He was too busy working the menial jobs that helped all of his seven kids make it through college. You couldn't read or write, yet you helped your kids with their homework. That's right. How did you do that? Just, he was just, uh, just had a mind to do what was right. He never told us he couldn't read or write. George Jr., at he 65, never, is his oldest son. He said, did you do your homework, you know? Let me see it, you know, and he'd glance at the page and said, okay, he said, now you tell me what this is about. Now what does this tell you, you know? And you don't, you can't tell whether a person is reading or picking you. <laughs> you really can't tell. Today, it's others who are doing the reading about George Dawson. But People like Richard Glaubman, a Seattle school teacher who wanted to know more. How did he do that? And what was this man like? And what must this man have seen just from a historical perspective? <laughs> One thing led to another. And soon, Glaubman and Dawson were in New York, meeting with Random House editor Kate Medina. This is your publisher. <laughs> Come on in. This is your house. This is mine. Nice, nice. It's a meeting it he nice. never could have imagined. Well, I didn't have the education and know how to put one together. But it wasn't long before yeah, Dawson was I telling his stories. Mine. My daddy always gave us a outlook on life. And Glaubman was writing them down. The hardships he's seen and the injustice that he encountered in his own life did not at all create any bitterness in him. You already signed these here? OK, I'll sign these to you then. The result, the story of extraordinary optimism in a life filled with adversity. It begins when Dawson is four, picking cotton with his grandmothers, singing slave songs. Can you sing one for me? Oh, boys, oh, boys, it ain't no need of running. I looked up on the hillside and I see no monster coming. When he was 14, he remembers hearing about a famous boat. It's the Titanic. Well, that is in the 14th day of April, in the year of 1912. Around that, that same time, water. George saw what he calls his first <laughs> flying yeah, horse. People call it the flying boy, the flying horse. An and airplane. But there are grimmer chapters to Dawson's history like well, seeing his friend yeah, Pete yeah, Spillman yeah, lynched. It just went down in me, just to see a, one man do another man like that. But from that, Dawson took away a lesson which has guided him a lifetime. I treat everybody just like I want them to treat me. And he's done that for 102 years. He looks at the good side of life, chooses to do that, and just 
wants to be grateful for what he has. You think you could ever live in New York City? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Today, the man who got by on $500 a month from Social Security finds himself in a social whirlwind. Big smile. There we go. Good. Good. Lovely. We're going on a horse ride, a buggy yeah. ride. Have a seat. Have okay, a seat. I'll have a seat. Would you like to get married again? Experiencing more in the last two years, he says, than he had in his first hundred. Let's hope that after we come from the library, it'll rain. Now, George Not Dawson hopes his life's journey. And I, I changed my name because I couldn't write. Will give those who need it inspiration. This was my name. All over the world, I went. Tell them what you do in church. I'm an usher. <laughs> an usher who's carried a Bible since 1927. Yeah, yeah. A Bible he can finally read. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Studying that book is my life. Your life is the greatest thing that you have. Next, a spot for sound along Puget Sound. I never had been to school. Never? Never. Why not? Well, I didn't have time. I had to work. Much has changed since George Dawson, at age 98, decided to learn to read. Friends and fans tore down his old frame house. You all set, Mr. Dawson? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. And they replaced it with a new brick one. And with help from Seattle writer Richard Globman, he's okay. written a book. See, this thing has a step here. That's different. So step on this one first, probably. How long? His step and his speech have been slowed by a recent stroke, but nothing could stop George Dawson from making this trip back home to Marshall. Looking forward to it? Sure. For decades, Mr. Dawson never really liked coming back here to Marshall. Maybe it's because he says he remembers when he was 10 and saw a friend lynched right here on the courthouse square. But when one lives to be 100, you see lots of things change. Today, Marshall welcomed Mr. Dawson back like a conquering hero. Old and young, they packed the library and hung on his every word. Don't stop telling the truth. And if you do that, you make it. I made it this far, and I'm, 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 I'm 103. Marshall, Texas salutes Mr. George Dawson. After the mayor made it George Dawson Day, he signed their books, met the descendants of old friends, and he touched the hearts of the children. How old is Mr. Dawson? 103 years old! Back in Dallas, Mr. Dawson is touching children he's never even met. At Priscilla Tyler Elementary, they started drawing pictures of the stories from his book after volunteer Philip Brown read it to them. What does it inspire you to do? To us. Uh, pay attention in class and do my best when I'm learning how to read. I brought you some Valentine's candy. Mr. Dawson can't help but be proud of his story and of how it inspires so many. It's a story that shows in 103 years just how much has changed. I saw you on national television. I ran out and bought that book and I said I've got to see that man somewhere. Gary Reeves, Channel 8 News, Marshall.